Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Wrecked Escape Pod mod, which is being made by forum user Steed Crushem. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, I think fairly obvious. It's escape pods. And not just one, but in fact three different escape pods, each with its own unique characteristics, so that you can pick just the right one for your particular mission. And I I love that idea. So let's just jump right on into the VAB and have a look at the currently six different parts that make up this mod. And let's start by grabbing a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then head here to a custom wrecked tab that I made earlier. And it's at this point that I should probably mention this spelling here isn't just some strange new way the youths today are spelling the word, but in fact stands for Recoverable Emergency Kerbal Transport. And I, I love that. I always like when a mod maker goes that little extra effort with the names. And so what do you get with Wrecked? Well, let's have a look at the first of the escape pods, the Mark 1A. And this is probably the escape pod which, in my mind, you'd be using more often than any of the others, at, at least for my thinking, because it is the escape pod geared towards atmospheric re-entry, and the reason being as to why this one is better equipped for that than the others is if we deploy air brakes. And I love that idea. So it's got built-in heat shields so it can be protected from the atmosphere and these lovely air brakes for slowing this thing down so it doesn't get too fast. And then if we actually look at the top here, we have a reminder to attach a parachute so once you're down to a safe speed, you release it and you're good and safe. Now, it also does have a few other tricks up its sleeve, as it is not just for one Kerbal, but is actually an un manned command pod as well, if you ever needed that for some reason. It, of course, has the lift surfaces for the air brakes, a built-in RCS system, which you can see the vents for at least one of them right here, with a thrust power of two, it has a built-in reaction wheel, SAS crew report, 25 electric charge, and finally 15 mono propellant for those RCS ports. And overall, it's a pretty cool escape pod. Now, part of the reason I wanted to grab the Mark 1, though, is to show you the different difference in size. Now each of these holds a singular Kerbal, but this, I think it's kind of justifiable with the size because of all the extra features. You got the air brake, you got the SAS, you got the reaction wheel, and the built-in RCS system. All of these things together I think kind of makes sense that this would be a bit bigger. Now as for the look and feel of this thing, I gotta say I love the modeling, I love the texturing, and that goes for all of these parts, so we'll just leave it at that for there, and we also do have some attachment points on this. As you can see, we have one on the top and the bottom, as well as one on the side there. Now, if we rotate this thing around so you can see the hatch, there we are. We have the wrecked hatch, and uh, quite a lovely little thing. And we do have another attachment point on it, which will come into play with this particular decoupler, which we'll look at momentarily. Now, let's head on to the next escape pod, which is the Mark 1D. Now this one is not built for re-entry, as it says on the top, not for re-entry. I do like that. Let's zoom in a bit more so you can see that. Ah, there we go. Lovely. We also have a lot of other good things on here. I do love the attention to detail. We've got the rescue bits. We've got the like, auxiliary inf interface panel. It's got lights on the side here. All very, very good. And actually, something I should point out, because there are, of course, some uh, light fixtures on this thing as well. They are compatible with indicator lights, which, of course, is a mod we've looked at in the past. Now, as for this escape pod and what it is useful for. This one was atmospheric re-entry. This one is built to float around space. As it does not have the air brake built in, this one on the other hand does have a data transmitter so it can keep in touch with the command center and there we go, extend that antenna. Very cool. And in the vein of being left floating in space, you're meant to survive in this thing much longer. For instance, rather than 25 electric charge 
charge in our battery, we actually have 45 in this one, so he can live inside of this container much longer. And if you have one of the top three mods for life support, either TAC, USI, or Snacks, this will also have additional extra provisions so that your Kerbal can survive floating in space in this thing for as long as possible. Though necessarily it doesn't have to be space, I actually put one of these on the side of a rover that I was playing around with earlier in the game, so you could use it as that, basically a extra survival shelter just in case things go wrong, as it's made for long-term escaping. Now the next one that we have is the Mark 1N, and this, though technically could be be used to go into atmosphere is actually the escape pod built for non-atmospheric planets or bodies etc moons and whatnot as rather than the air brake on this one this has retro rockets. Ah, oh, yeah, I love those things. Now, like with the atmospheric re-entry escape pod, this one also does have all the same things. The uh, uh, RCS system, reaction wheel, SAS, the 25 electric charge. Oh, actually, no, this one has 30 electric charge, five more, nice. The monopropellant and the solid fuel for the uh, retro rockets, which has 24, and you can adjust that to whatever your needs are. Uh, but yeah, the big difference on this one is, of course, these beautiful retro rockets here, which, if you have Landertron installed, these retro rockets are compatible with it, which is why I think in my head that you could use it still with an atmospheric planet, because it is the retro rockets for Landertron. It'll just let them take over and land your thing nice and safe. Very, very cool indeed, but yes, its intended purpose is to land on places like the moon or Minmus. Though, <laughs> these rockets are actually kind of powerful. If we uh, scroll up, they have... 57 kilonewtons of thrust in atmosphere and 72 in vacuum. And this thing's not exactly the heaviest at just under one ton at 0.99. So um, it actually can get some altitude. So maybe don't use it on Minmus or you might be flying off of it just as easily as landing. But yes, a very cool system nonetheless. And, uh, you know, still the same sort of uh, hatch right here. Very cool overall and a bit more of a industrial construction vibe out of that one. Now the next part we have isn't actually an escape pod, but it has the same aesthetic, the same shape, size, etc. And that is the compatible container for Wrecked. And this is actually a container for things. Now if you have the base game with no additional mods, it's just going to be ore. Now if you have interstellar fuel switch installed, you'd be able to switch this over to all sorts of other resources and the idea is to just have an interesting compatible container for these different decouplers and what I was playing with earlier for this was actually quite interesting as I'd launch one of these different escape pods from a ship and then at the same time I'd launch a compatible container so we'd have the escape pod to get them safe and then a container full of additional supplies they might need which is just something you could do but again without interstellar fuel switch it is just an ore container Container, which limits its usefulness, but it is quite nice nonetheless and still has the same sort of uh, coffin shaped door, but for freight only. Now, as for the last two parts, they are decouplers, and we'll have a look at the first one, the Shrek decoupler. And this, as you can see, has the same shape as the doors on the different escape pods, which I quite like that fact, because it is kind of an awkwardly shaped door compared to normal containers. So having this weird coffin shaped thing, which actually I have put it upside down, there we go, works quite nicely. Now you will notice, oh boy, grab the wrong thing, that the decoupler does have an attachment point there. And remember that attachment point on the door? Guess what? They go together. So if we hold Alt there, they fit perfectly in line between the decoupler and the door. So you know it makes sense that they could open up the escape pod door from inside of the space station or ship or whatever you have. And then you just hit spacebar. This goes flying out and you're good to go. I quite love it. Now the other decoupler is the ITA decoupler. And this is actually an inline one, which as you can see is in the 1.25 size of factor 
and has that same coffin shape, and for this one, you can use it with either the freight quite handily or any of the escape pods and fit them in line on your ship, and I really love this one. It's perfect for space stations. You just put a couple of these going down the line, and you got all the freight and escape pods you could need for whatever your purpose. And actually, another fun use that I was thinking about earlier, but I haven't tested out yet, which goes between the escape pods and the freight containers is a colony ship. You just fly over the planet in a very low orbit, as low as possible, and release just all of these things in line and have them go down to the planet and hopefully, hopefully safely. But yes, that is all the different parts, so let's actually look at a crip, a crip? No, a quick little ship that I built earlier, the erect ship, to show these off, and let's head out to the launch pad. Now, hopefully everything works properly. I have tested this, but you can never know once you get onto camera. So, the first one we're gonna have a look at is this one over here, if the decoupler goes correctly. Hey, you did beautiful, and you know what, I actually may as well go and decouple of these other things. There we are. There we go, beautiful. And so we have all three decoupled, and I just realized I forgot to put Kerbals into them, but hey, remember, they're also unmanned command pods. So if we go to the first one, which is the atmospheric reentry, even though there's no Kerbal, we can still work with it. And let's actually open up our uh, beautiful hyper edit and put us up to about 250 altitude. And just to give a basic demonstration of how this would work. So you'd re-enter atmosphere, deploy your air brakes to slow yourself down. And then once you were at a safe altitude and speed, you'd release your parachute and hopefully survive a horrible crash, which actually we're coming quick. Oh boy, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, I probably should have had it go up higher and we actually destroyed one of the other pods. So let's let's revert flight to the launch. Oh, see what I see what I told you. I told you. It works in testing, and then when I come out here. It doesn't. Okay, so let's just go ahead. We looked at that one, so just imagine it worked. We were we fell through the atmosphere. We're good. That's the point of that one. Let's actually put a Kerbal in this one this time. So let's transfer one of our crew, good old Jebediah. He'll like a good retro rocket. And rather than the space bar, let's just uh, manually decouple that. And... Perfect, there we go. So even though this one really isn't meant to have a parachute on it since it's meant for non-atmospheric places, you can still easily put a parachute on top since it does have that attachment point up there. And rather than uh, having it start from a height, let's actually just uh, turn on the retro rockets. It's quite nice, so let's deploy the retro rockets first so they're nice and extended and then activate to show you how powerful these things are. We got a Kerbal in here, this is a full pod, and if we activate this engine here on Kerbin, look at the altitude we're getting. That is impressive. That is with a full load of 24 solid fuel, so you may have to adjust that for whatever planet you're heading to. Oh, I should probably turn on the SAS there. There we go, beautiful. And so, yeah, you may want to turn it down quite a bit if you're heading to Minmus, or turn it a bit more up for the moon, etc. And then it would just uh, hopefully land on the planet, or potentially be your escape from the planet, which I just thought about. Oh man, just put this thing on a rover, and then once you're done with the rover, launch this, and you're good. You're safe. Let's uh, open up that, and we should be good to go. Hopefully this parachute actually opens. There we are, lovely. And finally, we have the... Oh yeah, I cannot switch vessels while in atmosphere. Of course we can't. Okay, land, land, come on, a little bit quicker. And... I'm gonna fast forward this for you guys, just, just so you know. Beautiful, we've landed. <laughs> <laughs> now we're safely on the ground and we can go back to the final escape pod, which again, I mean, we're not even going to bother launching it because it's it can't go anywhere. It has nothing except for its lovely antenna, which, boom, there we go. We've extended it. 
who doesn't love that? And uh, yeah, that is the long-term survival pod, which again, if you have life support, would be perfect for a long excursion. And then finally, we have the cargo ones up here, which if I just quickly go through all the different action groups, there we are, we can release the inline ones, and there go our cargo containers. And yeah, that is the Wrecked Escape Pod mod. I really do love this thing. It's got some awesome escape pods. I really do love the atmospheric one, the retro rocket one, way of the crap over there now, and even the different containers. They're very cool, very well made, and a perfect addition to any game. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, I definitely say to give it a try. You can take a look at the link in the description, but that's going to be all for today, folks, and I hope you have enjoyed, and of course, you do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.